Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is another episode of BXGS, a show about building things with JavaScript. Today, as I already mentioned, we're going to be doing some puppeteer stuff, and uh, there's actually two tickets or two proposals that we're going to be uh, covering today. First of them is the CSS regression testing. So the proposal was to actually look at the available tools, but we're going to go a fun way and we're going to build um, our own thing, right? So I think this is way more interesting than just having a look at browser stack or whatever. Most of the existing solutions already have a pretty decent um, documentation. So, you, you know, if you're interested in that, just gonna go and have a look yourself. But we're gonna be doing a more fun version. We're gonna be building um, thesis regression test toolkit, let's call it this way, or um, I guess framework. I mean, I wouldn't call it a framework, but basically a tool using uh, Puppeteer. So if you are not familiar, Puppeteer is a Google Chrome library for controlling headless Chrome version. Uh, if you didn't know, you are, um, there is like since version Chrome 58, I believe, uh, there's a way to run Chrome in a headless mode, which means that you can uh, have Chrome running in the background with full page rendering and everything running as, as is it typically runs, but without actually rendering anything for a user, right? So this is really works well for automation as well as testing and as well as some other Chrome specific things that I will try to do today. So the other proposal is the automation with Puppeteer and Chrome Headless. Um, this is exactly like the global thing that we're going to do. As one of the tasks, we're going to go for the CSS regression stuff. And as some other things we're going to do, uh, we're going to extract the coverage of the or uh, the percentage of the used CSS in JavaScript in the um, your project. And we're probably going to try to run, I'm not sure if that's implemented yet or not. So the Chrome, since uh, I, I'm not even sure which version of it, but they basically added Lighthouse support. So this is the um, progressive web apps analytics thing that is now integrated into Chrome. And uh, we're going to try and use it headlessly as well and get the results for it. So. So we did three things using Puppeteer. First of all, we did the CSS regression testing using pixel perfect image comparison. Uh, you can find it in rendercomparison.js file. Um, we used the Puppeteer to actually capture the screenshot from the browser. We used pixel match to do the pixel, pixel by pixel comparison. And we used the PNG GS to actually transform um, the images into required format for pixel match. The way it works is actually pretty simple. So we open the browser, we set the viewport to whatever we configure. In this case, I took the 1080p resolution, which is kind of the standard. We go into localhost 3000, which is our local website that we have under the website here. Uh, and we wait for the page to render the input that we uh, created there, right? So we focus the input and type in hello world to make sure that it actually outputs uh, what is expected. And we can actually visually check that if we go to old layout, you will see that there is a hello uh, world printed here and you, you can see the result that we have entered hello world, which is the denied, yeah which is the dynamic part of the page. So uh, after that, we take a screenshot called new layout, and then we check if the old layout is present. So if there's no old layout, we just say, hey, no old layout here. We copy the new layout to old layout and exit because there's nothing to compare against, right? If there is an old layout, we load both files, new layout and old layout as uh, special data required for pixel matching, and we create a resulting PNG diff. Once we did that, we do the pixel match function on all that stuff with the parameters and we set the threshold here to zero because we want pixel perfect comparison, right? And then we just see the difference uh, in pixels. So if there is no difference, then well, no difference in rendering, we successfully pass the comparison. And if there are any different pixels, we can actually see that, okay, there is some different pixels and it's broken, right? So um, you can run it by running node render comparison here. So there's, this is our website and uh, to test that it actually breaks and that the rendering works correctly, you can just uncomment this thing here and it will actually break the rendering test, right? If you run this again, we'll actually see that um, the image is no longer matched and you will get a warning saying, hey, there's a 2,744 pixels difference. And if you check the old layout and new layout, you see that the new layout contains the green border while the old layout contains the blue one. And this is why it breaks. So the second thing we did was the code usage. Um, Chrome allows you to go through the 
create the JavaScript and CSS code coverage and check how much of your code is actually used. So we run the Puppeteer, we started the code coverage um, before getting the page, then we went to the page, waited for input again, waited for page to render completely. We got the coverage data and then reduced the data into the two values. So first of all, we reduce into total bytes that are there. And then we reduce the uh, ranges that are provided into actually used bytes. So the ones that are actually used by the page and output that into the console. Um, if you run the node code usage JS, you will actually see that in this case, we used about 1% of CSS. This is because we import the whole Bulma framework, but actually have like two headers and an input, which obviously accounts for about 1% of CSS. And then we have a 64% of JavaScript used. Um, this is because we're running Next.js in a dev mode, which means that there's a whole bunch of like hot reload and other stuff that is never invoked actually in uh, just rendering the page, right? And uh, finally, we used the Lighthouse, uh, we performed the Lighthouse audit uh, for the website and generated the report and displayed the score in the uh, results. So the way it works is pretty simple. You would need the Puppeteer library that would start the Chrome for you and you would need the Lighthouse library that would actually do the audit itself. So it's a separate library, even though the uh, Chrome itself, if you go into inspect tab and go into audit, you will find the audit over here. For some reason, Puppeteer doesn't yet have access to that. I mean, maybe it's there yet, but the API are not written. Uh, but anyway, it's quite easy to set up with a separate library here. So all you need to do is pass additional argument for Chrome saying that you want to remote debug import, which is 9222 in this case, is the default one. And then once the browser starts, you just call the Lighthouse uh, library on the website that you want to audit. And in this case, I just write the results to the results JSON file and uh, output the score. You can run that by running nodes um, lighthouse.js. It takes about 20, 25 seconds on my machine to run. Um, there is a lot of things that the Lighthouse actually checks. And uh, in a second while, once it finishes, I will show you the example of the report. Um, so um, yeah, this could be useful um, to, to run basically once you say after the staging project, right? So because you don't really want to run it on every rebuild because it takes a lot of time. So as you've seen here, you get the audit finished, you get the final score. And here's the whole report. And you know, it's really, really big with a lot of information that can help you make your app better, starting from the um, accessibility info, offline, uh, progressive web apps friendly and whatever, there's like a ton of things in here, including best practices, first meaningful pain time and so on and so forth. So there's like a lot of information, including by the way, the code coverage. So if you want to run only one thing, you can go with this, uh, which yeah, you can basically extract from here. It's just a JSON. It is a big JSON, but yeah, you know, uh, if you run the same info in or the same uh, audit in the Chrome, you will get a nicer UI here. So let me just run it for you over here. It does takes a bit longer, I guess, because it has to render all of that on the screen. So it's not 20 seconds, just slightly longer. But uh, once it's done, you will actually, you know, if you want to run it manually, you can do it uh, like this and you will get a nicely looking, very user friendly report, let's put it this way. So in, in this case, you would have to implement the UI yourself, which can be a bit tricky, or maybe you just want to track specific metrics. So yeah, this is basically it. Um, there's yeah, really Puppeteer is an amazing tool for automating all of that stuff, uh, including end-to-end -end testing, by the way. So we did not do this within this tutorial, but you can do end-to-end -end testing with uh, Puppeteer very, very easy because it has the API required for manipulating everything. Like in this case, we manipulated only a keyboard, right? So we did typing here, but you can uh, just as easily manipulate mouse movements, clicking and so on and so forth. So it's, it's a very powerful tool. There we go, there's our audit. As you can see here, the PVA score is very low because obviously there's like no web workers, no offline, HTTP, so on and so forth. Performance is also not very good because we're running in a dev mode. So yeah, you know, um, still, that's basically it. Thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye.